You are listening to the strongest podcast in CrossFit. This is the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. Before we start the show, I'd like to thank the sponsors that are helping this podcast grow. The first one is Liberté Lifestyle. Liberté Lifestyle have the best knee sleeves in the game. I've worn all different types of knee sleeves, and I always go back to Liberté. They're super durable, they don't rip, and they last a very, very long time. So go check out Liberté Lifestyle and check out all the different styles of knee sleeves that they have. And then the next one we have is Hero Barbell. Hero Barbell is the fastest growing barbell company in the functional fitness community. Their barbells are have all different colors, all different designs, super comfortable. The knurlings are amazing, and the spin on these barbells are absolutely insane. So go to Hero Barbell to check out all the different type of barbells that they have in stock. And then the last one is Sharpen the Axe. Sharpen the Axe, I've been wearing their clothes for multiple years there are long sleeve shirts sweatshirts shorts i always wear them uh, you, you may have even seen them on the podcast before i've been before they became a sponsor super comfortable i the shorts i always wear working out because i just feel like they're a better fit for me compared to the nikes or any other shorts in the game so all these companies i have a promo code it's all type one so click type one in all the promo code sections and you get 10 percent off of every item you get so once again thank you for these companies to help this podcast grow and let's go to the show all right guys welcome to a new episode of the type one lifting podcast i have a great guest she's actually a local too as well um she's a crossfit athlete yoga instructor you know pretty much she does everything so bring curlin how you doing good how are you tonight not bad um i Right, I just want to get this right off the bat. I, I have a little gripe with you. Okay. <laughs> so I posted a picture of you and Evan from uh, uh, Fit, to, Fit to Serve. So I can't, I can't pop it up on my screen, but that's it for the people that are viewing. <laughs> and you voted for Evan, not yourself. He looked great. <laughs> <laughs> He's rocking it. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> when, when I saw, I, so he was on my podcast a couple of weeks ago. I actually, he's, he's out, um, last week, but yeah, you know, like I literally saw his, his video with that outfit on and like literally I scrolled down a little, scrolled up and like literally your image was right there too. And I'm like, yeah. oh, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta see who wore it better. Great opportunity. Yeah. Those yeah. colors are in right now, I guess. Everyone's feeling it. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I used to wear, orange yeah yeah i used to wear orange orange uh, metcons for a while but then it got like really hard to find them and i'm like just forget it i'll just pick whatever's in like the nike oh, outlet yeah they always switch their colors the metcons yeah, yeah it, stick with a color yeah so i'm just like what whatever's the cheapest thing available whatever yeah, yeah but um the... but also we have a couple other things in common as well oh what, let's hear so it. i gra- i graduated with a graphic design degree and then you did too as well. Yes. Oh, well, art in art major. And you were an art history major. I was an, uh, art history minor. I was a. It's so my university. They didn't like make you pick a category. So it's just like a degree in fine arts. So it's a bachelor of fine arts in art and design. Yeah. Um, versus, I know a lot of like art schools. Like it'd be like a bachelor of fine arts in illustration or like mm-hmm. printmaking or a specific category. Um, it was a generalized art and design degree oh, okay and yeah. then the other thing is uh we both played lacrosse before oh you did some digging <laughs> yes yes i i did i i did i listened to the um the training think tank podcast that oh, you were on yeah so like was it was like two years two or three years ago yes yeah it was august or september of 2021 so yeah two years two, yeah, two years, years ago. ago yeah 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 so um so uh, just a little bit more about you. Like I know you, you lived in what the, um, you li- used to live in the white plains, New York, right? Yeah. I still live there. I'm actually just here visiting for a couple of okay. weeks. Okay. And so like, obviously like New York is a, a pretty big hotbed for lacrosse and stuff like that. So, um, uh, you know, what was it like growing up in New York? Um, well, specifically for lacrosse, um, it wasn't big when I was growing up. It's bigger now. So I guess, what was that like? I don't know. When I was in seventh grade, I started playing lacrosse, which is pretty old 
for okay. a sport like soccer or basketball. You can start playing that when you're in kindergarten or first grade or whatnot. But mm-hmm. it wasn't a thing until I was in seventh grade. I remember me and my best friend signed up for like the modified lacrosse team together. And like the draw was like sign up for lacrosse and get a free t-shirt. Or like, we want a free t-shirt. <laughs> and so that's why we signed up. And like, we both loved it. And like the two of us ended up playing like up like through high school, like varsity lacrosse. <laughs> Nice. And so you, yeah, I think you played defense. Was that, am I correct? Yeah, I played defense. Okay. So I, I played D MIDI. So if okay. the listeners don't know what that is, so I'm on the wing of the face off and I can go back and forth and left and right, but you had to wait for someone else to go over the oh, field yeah. to, to do the three yeah, in the back. Like that, those lines. Yeah. Yeah. I it, so long ago <laughs> yeah it well i i mean i so i played in a old men's lacrosse league in in coming for for quite oh, a while cool. i i didn't play like i stopped playing in gosh i think it was like two years ago two or three years ago and so it was like oh, 35 and over i'm way older than you so but it's like 35 and 35 and older and here i am played all through college played like very high level lacrosse like out of college and stuff and so I'm like yelling at everybody, like two hands on the stick, you know, just like like pick yeah. up the ground ball and stuff. And so the the one point, at one point, one of the guys is like, "Hey, man, I, I know you really want to try, have us try hard, but a couple of us have only played lacrosse for a year." <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" And I'm, they're like, "Yeah, we've like this is a 35 and older league, and they just picked up a stick like a year oh, ago." Wow, that's yeah. so random. I just decided to pick it up. Like, I feel like yeah. sports like pickleball, people just like pick that up randomly. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I think for most of those people, it was because of the ki- their kids were playing lacrosse and they wanted oh. to, they wanted to kind of understand it a little bit better. And that's why they joined, they joined the club. That's super cool of them. But yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's funny. They called you out. <laughs> yeah. All the time. It's so, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I was just yelling the whole time in, in a good way. Like I was a yeah, positive sure, reinforcement. Sure. So, yeah. 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 I wasn't like the a-hole that was just like, what are you doing? You know, just not like that. So yeah. But you're uh, in all, and you're being helpful. Yeah, I, I, I just want to help out. That's it. I just want yeah. the team to win and, and play good. Exactly. So, um, and also, um, you went to University of Michigan too, as well. Yes. Uh, so I am a huge, huge Michigan fan. Oh, what makes you a big Michigan fan? So, um, I've said this before on the podcast, but like, um, uh, when I was in middle school. I was getting a haircut and they were playing the Ohio state Michigan football game when Desmond Howard ran it for a touchdown and did the Heisman um, at the end of the end zone. And like with, when I used to originally live in Massachusetts, they really, they didn't really have that many like call like division one college football teams. So it was like BC, but they weren't that great. And so like everyone mm-hmm. was like finding another team and I just kind of latched on to them and went with it and still, that still moment. a big fan. Yeah. Yeah. They're a fun team. I mean, they, did great this year <laughs> yeah yeah it's a good so, year to be a michigan fan oh of course yeah <laughs> I've, I've been waiting i've been waiting since like 1998 with like for like that last championship they had yeah but so yeah. what 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 made you go to michigan um a lot of people from new york go to michigan actually <laughs> oh i um, did not know that yeah like i was in a sorority in michigan there's 50 girls in my pledge class i would say like 40 girls were from the east coast like new york Massachusetts like so there's a pretty big like east coast population at the university um, yeah. I chose it specifically so I can major in art and design but I didn't want to go to an art school because I also wanted to take classes in other subjects mm-hmm. so like part of the degree like you had to take classes in different uh, schools at the university like I took an astronomy class like English class um, which I thought was interesting not just classes in art and design so that's yeah. why I chose chose to go there yeah. So did you have, did you have an opportunity to go to RISD? I did. I used to go a couple of summers. I spent at RISD. My mom is a RISD graduate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So what, what made you get into, I, I, what made you get into art? I guess my mom, cause okay. she was an art, like an art, an artist, I guess, or she was in printmaking and she had her own printmaking company. Um, so a lot of my art, she taught me, or we didn't really take a ton of art classes growing up. Like my mom liked us to learn on our own. So we had like a studio art studio in our house growing up where we'd paint and sketch and whatnot. Like whenever we go on trips, we always bring a sketchbook or a camera. So I just grew up doing art and then okay. stuck with it through college. Do you, do, do you still do it now? 
I occasionally like sketch and photography. So like my two like two things I love to like drawing and I love photography were my favorite too. So I do photography occasionally. Um, and same for drawing. I'll sit outside and sketch things, but not as okay. not nearly as much as I used to. Yeah, and yeah. design a little bit as well. Before I got into nutrition coaching and becoming a yoga instructor, I used to do graphic like freelance graphic design. Yeah, but I haven't so, done that in a while. Yeah, I I mean I, the only type of graphic design I do is mainly for this podcast, and like that's it. Because for me, for me, when I got out of college it was really hard for me to get to find a job. I don't know if you had the same situation too. So it was like, okay, they're looking for someone with like X amount of years. And here I am getting out of college and like barely have any experience. Yeah. Um, well, after I got like, while I was at school, I do internships and in like different companies. I worked with like a fashion designer one summer. Um, it always involved like commuting into Manhattan mm -hmm. when you live outside the city. And I didn't love, working in New York City <laughs> so after I graduated <laughs> I wanted to find something I can do in Westchester so I started doing freelance graphic design for a couple of yoga instructors and fitness trainers in Westchester and that led me to working at the Lululemon store in Westchester and from there I started doing photography for the store so my main job for them was every week they'd send me out to do a photo shoot with one of the local trainers in the area so I do the photo shoot with the trainer and I was in charge, like posting it on their social media and posting like their weekly newsletter with new arrivals. Um, so I did do design and photography a little bit. And then after doing that for about like two years, I wanted to be a fitness trainer. I was like, I can do this because I've been photographer, like photographing them. And mm -hmm. then I left Lululemon to get my yoga teacher certification. And then I also got my CrossFit level one certification, started coaching CrossFit and teaching yoga. Cool. Very cool. Now, how I've, I've never even attempted to get a yoga certification. And so how do you get that? Like, how is it very hard to attain at all? Oh, you had a yoga school. So I had my 200 hour certification. So all different certified yoga schools have different ways to accumulate the hours. They can do something super intensive over the course of like, I don't know, what's the shortest range. It could be three weeks or whatnot, or you can like spread it out throughout a year. It depends on like what the school offers as long as you accumulate the 200 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And I know you have a YouTube channel too, that has some yoga videos on it. Yeah. So are you, are you looking to like get back onto that at all? Or what, what are you I thinking? I haven't updated on in a while. I started that over COVID, like quarantine. Um, I think I have like 25 or 30 videos up there. So I just mm -hmm. filmed like a bunch of yoga classes to post up there. Um, it also like, when I used to, I haven't taught in a studio in a while. I teach all remotely for my private clients for yoga, but it was a good way to give a preview of the type of yoga I teach before someone hires me to teach a private class. Yeah. It's like promote the brand pretty much. Yeah. Hey, hey, this is what I can do. And if you like it, let's go for it. Yeah. One of the styles I used to teach um, hot power yoga. So my classes online are mostly like restorative classes, like for athletes. Okay. Oh, very cool. Very cool. And then you said you got your CrossFit level one. So what, what made you get into CrossFit? Um, also the dilemma, they make you try different fitness classes. So I remember my first CrossFit class, like all my coworkers were obsessed with CrossFit or like they'd go to CrossFit class and they never heard of it. And I remember at that time I was doing yoga every day. I just used to do Bikram yoga every day mm -hmm. for a couple of years. And I went to CrossFit. I was wearing a sweater and like yoga pants. And I had no idea what to expect. <laughs> and then I just loved it and got a membership. And signed nice. for the Open like a month into doing CrossFit. I think I started January. So my first Open was the 2014 Open. And, like every wow. movement there was like my first time doing it over a squat of 65 pounds. Or like I remember there's one of the workouts I got 11 toes to bar. Like that was my first toes to bar. <laughs> wow, that's so, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's really fun. cool. Yeah. So um, what – like what was what was it the camaraderie of like everyone being there and like kind of supporting you that made you kind of stay because obviously if you do some of the workouts you're you know 
you're absolutely dead and you're like, what the hell just happened? But you know, what made you actually stick with it? Uh, I think it was the competitiveness of it. I'm a pretty competitive person. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I like that. Like you did the workout, like your name's on the whiteboard and your scores on the whiteboard and you can see like what other people got. <laughs> yep. So I liked that. And I think that's what got me to start going. Yeah. Um, and then so. what, what, what made you start? Like, what made you notice that you were actually like pretty good at this? Uh, I wasn't pretty good for a while. I couldn't do any, I couldn't do a push up when I first started CrossFit. Um, so like 2014 to 2016, I would just like go and take class and like was learning the movements, wasn't super serious about it. And then starting like end of 2016, I like really like there was a group of like competitive athletes at the gym who would work out during open gym hours and follow like a comp like training program. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to do what they were doing. So I started getting individual programming from one of the coaches at the gym. I started count, like getting a nutrition coach and I started tracking my macros. And then once I started doing that, that's when I started to improve mm-hmm. more so in like the six months of like individual coaching and tracking macros than like the two years of cross that I've been doing prior. And then it's crazy kept going from there <laughs> yeah well, that's awesome um so who was who was it just a, a guy or a, a guy or a girl from like your box that were just doing like one-on-one coaching with you yeah yeah okay okay very cool and so um when when did the when did training think tank come around for you so in 2019 i started working with adam my coach at training think tank and i had been working with the coach at the gym for a while and kind of agreed like we got me as far as I could go like on my own and I needed like a competitive or like a community of competitive athletes to train with or like kind of like compare compare your scores to like kind of know where they're at get more information and just needed a coach who was more part of like CrossFit and had worked with like other CrossFit athletes before so I went to a camp at training think tank but like before I even went to the camp I knew I was going to want to work with Adam Um, my coach from the gym had been coached by Adam so that's how I found out about training think tank so like even for like the open like the year before I remember like we were texting like getting scores from like athletes on site here like kind of see where I'm at because that's the open matter so like seeing if it's like redo workouts and whatnot Um, and so my training was kind of similar to the style of coaching from training think tank because um, that's what my coach used to follow. So similar to how we programmed. Okay. And so I know you talked to Adam for like a long period of time, but like, when did you guys like first actually meet? Uh, I think I, uh, that February I came out for a camp and then started working with him okay. at the camp. So in February of 2019. So what, what were your first thoughts of him in like the program that he was giving you? Um, oh my gosh, I don't know. It was, it was just at the time, like when you first started working as a new coach, it's like testing for a little bit. And it's also, I was at like a different level in CrossFit where like not everything has to be like linear progressions anymore. Like he didn't have to teach me how to get a muscle up or like how to get it. Like I could do all the movements at that point versus before, like in the years prior, I was like still working to get like my first muscle up or like first, like, yeah, pretty like like basic things like that but like I could do everything now so my program started to advance include more advanced movements like in workouts so that was a change as well okay all right cool and then um obviously training think tank you have you know Noah Olson you know Travis Mayer and like a bunch of other people there too and so how how was like that group of people like welcomed you in and kind of helped you you know step up your game um, well, like just being on site, like there's a ton of like really awesome, impressive athletes here and like training here, like everyone's working hard and it's fun doing like group sessions and con- like pushing yourself against everyone. But even when you're doing your own thing at the gym here, uh, it's still motivating because everyone's just working hard. Yeah. So do you train with like Alexis or any of the other girls at the same time? Or is that like you just train with another guy just to kind of, you know, well, we not do- compare numbers? Um, I mean, it depends on the time of year it is. Like in the off season, most people just kind of do their own thing because everyone has different things to work on. But now that it's like picking up closer to the season, there's like on-site group sessions 
two or three times a week where everyone trains together and they're run by the coaches on site. So whoever wants to participate in the group session can. And for the most part, everyone's at the gym for the same time. Like everyone gets here for their AM session around the same time and then PM session around the same time. So you see everyone every day. Okay. Okay. Who, who like out of like all the people that you've seen train, like who are, who was like one of the best, best people that you've seen work out and you're like, gosh, I gotta, I gotta get to their level. Um, I honestly like don't necessarily think that way. Like I don't okay. like to compare myself to others. I never mm-hmm. like look at someone and like there could be traits from them that like, Oh, like, I wish like my like snatch look like that or like I could rope climb like that but I'm not like I want to be them like you want to be yourself and like you just want to learn from everyone so like watching all these different athletes move and whatnot like you always learn things like you pick up on like things that people do and like that's helpful and inspiring but it's never like oh like I want to be like that person exactly okay okay Mm -hmm. what what has been uh some of the weaknesses that you've had um that you're working on for like this season and, and, and for you know, the future? Um, like movement wise, I guess we've been doing a ton of rope climbs, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, like footwork on rope climbs is something that I'm working on. And then always wall balls. <laughs> yeah. Wall balls well, cause, hard. cause you, how, how tall are you roughly? I'm five three. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, obviously that, you know, doing rope climbs and stuff like that you have more you know way to go up and do a lot more pulling and even wall balls you got to use your shoulders a lot more just to get it to the targets yeah yeah so i always i've like it takes me three pulls to get up the rope <laughs> i so I, i'm six six so it just takes me like uh, maybe like one one and a half okay. yeah if that yeah <laughs> so i've been trying to work on that but my my problem is i'm always i always freak out going all the way down so i don't um, like I don't let it go. So I just kind of like to slowly go down and do it that way. Uh, you got to work on that then. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, I don't want to burn my hands either. So that's another thing. Yeah. It just, uh, I don't know what kind what's your foot like? Do you use like a J hook? Uh, yeah. Yes. I use a J hook. Uh, yeah. You have to almost like switch your feet around to get down on the that okay. kind of clamp. All right. I gotta watch, I gotta watch a video on that. <laughs> yeah or you probably just like lower like slide down a little bit and jump down like you don't have much to go like <laughs> yeah true true but i i always see these like guys that are like literally letting go and they're just like rolling their hands down and then they just like grab it like last minute yeah that's what uh you need i forgot the footwork name i think it's the at i won't say the f hook. there's a different footwork that's not the j hook where you just like move your feet out a little bit and can slide right down hmm. okay yeah I, I gotta work on that so yeah yeah. So awesome. Fun. But, um, also I know you've done some weightlifting competitions too, as well. Yes. So how, um, how do you like that doing that? It's fun. So in 2022, I took the season off across it and I just focused on like a weightlifting cycle and competed at weightlifting nationals. I was just like, I guess a little, I needed a break from CrossFit, like after the 2021 season, like that whole summer, all I did was train weightlifting and competed in a meet in August and then qualified for nationals. And that like whole year building up, I kind of did a little CrossFit, but wasn't really, couldn't really get into a rhythm with my training. So I decided not to compete through the season or not to quarterfinals. Yep. And instead I did a weightlifting cycle building up to competing at weightlifting nationals, which was in July of 2022. So I competed there. It was in Las Vegas, which was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah. Did you do a little gambling after? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. not, I never gambled before. Maybe I did like a slot machine once, like years ago with my friend somewhere. Yeah, just like oh, a dollar, put once. a dollar in. I, yeah. Yeah. I must have done, I think, once ever, but I didn't gamble when I was in Vegas. Yeah. I did play I, carnival games, though. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's all you got to do. I, I, I went there for a bachelor party and I probably spent like maybe 50 bucks there. And then I have other friends of mine that's like dropped like $800 that the money they couldn't afford to lose oh, on gosh. like on blackjack. And I was like, Oh, not blackjack. They're playing poker. And I'm like, why are you playing poker? Like these people are been, uh, are like pros in this area and you're just going to get smoked. Like what's, yeah. I was like, I don't it. get it. Yeah. He just lost $880 and he's just like told his, told his wife and his wife was not having it whatsoever. 
I can't imagine. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny there. People you, they just like suck you in the machines, the tables. I stayed at like the Bellagio for like two nights when I was there. And I remember like I'd go down at six AM like to get breakfast and there'd be people like drinking beers like coming up the elevator. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's that's great. funny. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I I've heard that like if you notice in casinos, they don't have like clocks or, or anything like that, or like they, they don't no. have any really windows. And also I've heard that they pump like, like hundred percent pure oxygen in there. So just so the people that are gambling, they could just like stay awake the whole time. That's wild. I believe that it's like, I just like hold my breath and like walk through the casino to the elevator. Cause it was all smoky. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, I, I had was I was playing blackjack with somebody like next to somebody that was like smoking cigarettes like all like the whole time and I was just like I couldn't do it it was gross yeah it's crazy yeah I like have no shame just like covering my mouth and walking past them. <laughs> 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 making them feel bad about it yeah yeah exactly um so since you've been training at training think tank are you looking to like move down here permanently at all or uh, well, I lived here for three years I did move down here okay um and I just moved back to New York in October. So I'm just here visiting for like three weeks. Okay. You, you miss, yeah. you miss the New York weather, like the snow and uh, cold. No, definitely not. Uh, I missed it here though. <laughs> like yeah. being here in the gym. Yeah. It, it's uh, kind of, it's so like you have like no family members that were down in Georgia at all. It was like pretty much like all by yourself. Yeah. I didn't have no family in Georgia. Yeah. That's tough. Like I, for, for me, I moved down here with my wife and my two, my, my, actually my, one of my kids at the time. And I had no, no family down here at all and everyone's like all up in massachusetts so it's you know uh -huh. it's a little tough to you know just it's like oh you, you know you have like you know my brother brian to hang out with and whatnot i'm like yeah that's yeah but it's not like my friends from like long a long time ago so it's like yeah it's different yeah 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 all and, my um, family lives in new york yeah so um do your uh, do your friends from new york or do they understand like what you're trying to do and kind of help you help you out um i think they understand like my friends always watch my competitions so like i'll keep them updated like you know let them know what's going on some of the live stream links so they're yeah. always rooting for me but like i they don't know really what's going on because <laughs> <laughs> it's hard it's hard to like explain <laughs> yeah and so you know, it, yeah is there sometimes that you have to tell them like listen i can't go out tonight i have like something going on or like something big the next day um, at all or like in over the years like that's happened yes um as a, like uh, no one really goes out like my friends don't really go out anymore like they have kids and they're mar like <laughs> maybe okay. for lunch yeah <laughs> yeah lunch but lunch is it lunch I and brunch don't go out anymore yeah i can't remember the last time i was out somewhere like going out i don't think i've done that in years <laughs> yeah i've i think i'm the same way too i haven't gone out that much i don't, I don't really yeah. care for it it's not it, i just it doesn't yeah. fill me up no, it's not really fun. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like I, I actually, I quit drinking on in September. So it's just like, I, I didn't, I wasn't like a raging alcoholic or anything like that. I was just like, mm -hmm. I would, I would have a drink the night before and then I would go work out the next day. And it was just like, I felt awful. And I'm like, I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to do this. Yeah. You don't feel good after. Yeah. No, not not worth it. But uh, no. but you, you actually made it to uh, semifinals at I think the you went to the Granite Games at one point. Yeah, in twenty twenty one, I did. Yeah. So what what was it like with like all those athletes and you know just being there at the semifinals? Um, it was. I mean, it was cool. It was exciting. Like, because I always wanted to compete at regionals, and by the time I was like at the level where I could have made it, I they canceled regionals all right so i did yeah so i went to sanctionals i went to two of the sanctionals before they also canceled that because of covid <laughs> so it wasn't like my first big comp like i'd been on a big stage before like at, i was at, at sanctionals but it was my first like i guess big individual competition in the u.s so it was exciting yeah and, and what was it like like seeing all like those games athletes and other people that are just like like trying to get a spot in um well i guess like at the i mean i was training we had like a really nice training group on site that year in 2021 like alessandra Pacelli was like part of the training group and like it was cool getting to watch her qualify for the games that year at granite games mm. um like lauren 
like a bunch of people are Fisher was here like Alexis like a bunch of girls we're all we all like we train together like on site so I mean when you're at a competition you're not really too focused on when anyone else is like you're just trying to like do the best you can and everyone's pretty nice for the most part <laughs> yeah and so with that whole with that whole training group did you guys like eat breakfast together or kind of like you guys had your own set schedule and you're like just leave me leave me um, alone yeah, I, would, I don't know what anyone else. Yeah, like you, there's a lot of training. Like we usually like wake up like first session like eight or eight thirty, and then like a midday session or like a PM session. So it's like go to the gym, like train, eat, go back to the gym, go home, eat, and back to the gym, eat, sleep, come back the next day, <laughs> <laughs> and like work at some point in between all that. <laughs> Yeah. And, and how, how do you manage, like, I know, I know you're all like online with your personal yeah. training and yoga and stuff like that. So how do you manage like balancing, you know, being an athlete and having a full-time, well, having a full-time job? Yeah. Well, it's nice. I can make my own schedule for things. So I do most of my work on my rest days, like Thursdays and Sundays, I do a lot of work. And then in between sessions or like before sessions, I'll get a lot done as well. I know and in the evening I just do things throughout the day <laughs> okay I've been doing it for so long it just comes naturally just like a yeah schedule. yeah yeah I could see that and also you chaos yeah I mean I could see I'd say, that's like me too I'm like so used to like doing the same thing over and over again even with like kids like running in the background and just like oh, screaming yeah. the whole time so just get the hang oh, of it sure. so yeah with kids that's a curveball because like you never know what they can throw at you <laughs> yeah, which true, true. Yeah, my yeah. so my um I so I have an eight year old and a five year old. So they and one's a boy the oldest one's a boy and the youngest one's a girl. And so okay. they they are they are at it with each other like all the time. And it's just like chill out, just like separate. Like go when well, you go upstairs, you stay down here. Like I don't like don't I don't want you guys arguing. Like it's stop. <laughs> Do they always fight? Do they ever get along? Uh, no, they, 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 they love each other like very much. <laughs> it's just like, my son is like, it's almost like he's trying to like poke the bear a little bit to, for my daughter. And he's just like trying to see like how far he can get to before she like starts getting mad. And maybe before I get, I get mad. So, or my, or my wife gets mad. So it's kind of yeah. like, yeah, he's trying to like test the waters a little bit. Oh, have fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's great. And he's like doing the gritty the whole time, like when he's just like running away and just like stupid stuff. And it's just like, oh, God, I want to kill you. I want to kill you, but I love you. Yeah, it's tough. But it's cute. <laughs> Do they play but, uh, sports? Yeah. So um, my son, he plays soccer, basketball. He played flag football. Uh, my daughter, she is playing soccer this year. Actually, um, next week she starts the season. So I'm the official head coach of her team. Oh, nice. so yeah and it like it's my, my wife's like are you, are you do you know how to coach like five Soccer? and six year olds and i'm like You're like it's like lacrosse <laughs> yeah it's not hard it's just like all right two lines just kick to one another and just like do a little scrimmage and just see how you dribble like that's that's it so yeah i feel you got this yeah it's it's they don't have a they, they don't even have a goalie oh really <laughs> Yeah, so it's just like okay, just run and kick in the net. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like run, just kick it in the net. Oh, yay! Okay, then you can start back, start back in the middle, and go back again. So, and Easy. then, yeah, and then my son played flag football this year, and I was the head coach for that too because I was the idiot, and I was just like, oh, I'll just like be the assistant coach, and I put my email down, and then all of a sudden, my wife's like, you know, you're the head coach of the football team, right? And I was like, uh. what, what? And I was, I was like no that can't be i asked for an assistant coach job and they're like no you're the head coach and you don't even have an assistant coach to help you out no one no one else signed up no no one else signed up and i'm sitting there <laughs> like who and so i talked to the uh the guy that was running the flag football thing and i'm like hey i need i need some help like i don't yeah. you know and so they're like oh one of the one of the guys sons was interested in helping you out and i was just like thank god and so him and I did it. And so it, was, it wasn't the greatest season, but whatever. I mean, the kids did learned. Your best. Yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> I had, I had the only female on my team. And then like, I think the majority of the kids were all uh, like third graders. No, no second graders. So when they, when they got the football, they would run the other side of the, like run the wrong oh. way. And I'm sitting there like, no, the other way, the other oh, way. Oh man. Like yeah. out of a movie, like, <laughs> Yeah. And like the they couldn't, team. Yeah. yeah, they couldn't line up. And it was just like, it was just, 
it was frustrating, but it was it was fun at the same time too. So I mean, obviously the kids want to win, but it's you know, yeah. it is what it is. It it's a good learning experience. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just black football. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's who cares? I mean, you're gonna you're gonna go wake up the next day and be perfectly fine. Yes. <laughs> so that that's what I do with like him watching sports. My son watching sports too. He gets so mad at some of the football teams, and so I'm like, dude, they don't they don't care. They don't know who you are. So like, yeah. Why even like bother? Like get so like pissed off about it. Sport, yeah. Thing with sport, you get emotionally invested. Yeah, I mean, I I get emotionally invested sometimes, but then like after the game's over, and I'm like, okay, that's it. Yeah, he'll learn to let it go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So (laughs) are are you are you a sports fan? Like, do you follow football or Um, anything? I follow. I don't. I follow football, and that's about like NFL. I don't really watch college football other than like a Michigan game. Yeah, but I only follow NFL. I don't really watch basketball unless it's the playoffs <laughs> um, yeah. or any other sport. Yeah. So I do, I do football. I'm in a fantasy football league. Okay. Okay. I know. Yeah. So that I watch. Yeah. So are you a Jets fan, Giants fan? I'm a Vikings fan. Why the Vikings? Yeah. My brother like loves the Vikings and year like when he was like he liked writing like blogs and stuff about football. So he had like a very good reason for like like choosing the Vikings as a team to like, like that he wrote about when he was like like eight or ten years old, and my whole family like just got on board with it. <laughs> okay. So we're all Vikings fans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. What do you think about Kirk Cousins possibly leaving? Um based off of his opinion, which we, we just agree with, like we'd be happy. Like he my brother's not a big Kirk Cousins fan. So wouldn't mind, but I like Kirk Cousins, so I'd be sad if he left. I think he's awesome. I watched yeah. the documentary with it, like um, the quarterback documentary on Netflix, mm-hmm. made me like him more. Yeah, thank you, thank he, you. it was, it was funny. Like he was, they always make fun of him, like saying he got like Cole's cash from like half of his outfits he wore, like during press conferences and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So. It's so funny because his wife just picks them out. <laughs> yeah, exactly, his and wife like, just, like she... picks out all of his outfits. <laughs> Yeah, and he's just like whatever. Like that, that's almost like my wife too. Like I, I could wear like shorts and a t-shirt like all day long. Like I don't care. Yeah. Like same ratty jeans or whatever. And she'll, she'll be like, I got something for you. And she's like, I'm like, all right, cool. So I'll just yeah. wear something nice, and that's it. Yeah, I think that was great. That like it made it better to know like that she picked it out and he just wore it. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> yep. See, he's very trusting. Yes. <laughs> so um, obviously the open is is here. Um, how did you do on the first one? 24.1. Um, I did fine. I don't really look at the leaderboard now that the open doesn't matter. Cause it's just like gets in your head. Um, so I don't know. I don't even know what place I am. And I probably won't look until like the end to see, like, make sure I made it, which I think I will, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it was fine. It was just a, like a Friday morning workout. I don't like to put too much energy into it. Yeah. yeah like yeah. i mean like mental energy like obviously you try really hard for the workout but like and it's exciting like getting like a mystery workout on thursday and watching the announcement and then doing it the next morning and we all do it in heats at the gym and like you get a judge and it's fun so yeah that's cool so, so who did you do did you did you do it with somebody else at all during the um 24 for, for 24.1 um i did i was in my own heat everyone was in the heat before i like <laughs> I missed the sign up. I signed up late. We have to like sign up on like a sheet. So mm-hmm. I missed, I signed up late. So like I was in the heat by myself. So I did it by myself and everyone just watched, but everyone <laughs> did it right before me. <laughs> that that must've been great. Yeah. It was fine. I like, it wasn't a long workout. Yeah. What, what if you don't mind me asking, what was your time? Um, seven fifteen. God damn it. That's fast. That's fast. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, mine was nowhere near that. So my eyes, okay. I'm, gl- I'm glad I finished it. But I, you know, it's it's funny. I did the workout and then I was thinking, I'm like, I took way too many breaks in between. And so that's what kind of screwed me. I should have just like kept on going or. Yeah, you didn't um, redo it? No, I didn't. Cause like, I, once again, it's just like time. Like, I don't really have the time to redo it. And, you know, I can't, you know, take time away because i'll have to go to like pick drop my kids off to school or you know pick them up and then i have to go to work and all that stuff and 
you know, and didn't do podcasts at, like exhibit a, what we're doing now. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like, and even being like a family guy. So it's kind of hard with all that stuff. Other priorities. That's, yeah. 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 But yeah. It's one of those so, things like you obviously could have watched your video and like done it better. But you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, but then I, I was looking at other, other people's times and I'm like, I'm like, I know I'm fitter than that person. And they just beat me on this workout. It's just like, yeah, you know, it's almost like, week. Yeah, I, I ho- I'm hoping I'm hoping there is a one rep max like lift or something like that. I yeah, why not? I hope so too. <laughs> yeah, it w- it would be nice because because I can probably be close to the top. Because I I remember um, do you remember that complex? It was like the deadlift, the hang clean, and then the power clean, and then the jerk for yeah, and there was like your toes 20, to bars and muscle. Twenty one, I think. Yeah, I think twenty. Yeah. I think I was like twenty one. So if I added if I added two more pounds to my lift, I would have gotten, I think maybe tenth place over oh, in wow. the world. Yeah. Oh, how much did you lift? That's pretty. It was two seventy seven. Oh, nice. Yeah. So now it's like I, my, I'm I'm a lot stronger now. So, but yeah. it's just my endurance just absolutely blows. But I'm like just praying if this oh, one heavy lift, lift. And I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm like I'll just be happy with that. Oh, cool. I hope you get your lift. Yeah. <laughs> so would, have you, do you think they should have like a one rep max snatch in the, uh, in the open? I feel like they wouldn't just put that. I feel like they do like a complex. I feel yeah, like I they would like, I don't know if they just like put a max snatch for like the general population. I feel like it'd be like a hang a snatch and a hang snatch over at squat or something. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Instead sounds good. Just like a one rep max snatch from the floor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I can, I can see that. So, do you, do okay. you even like, look, yeah, do you even look at Dave Castro's like videos or anything like that? Um, uh, a little. I, I know the clue. I saw the clue this week. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm at the, I'm at the point yeah. now where it's just like I just see the video. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm just gonna wait till Thursday. Yeah, I don't usually try guessing. <laughs> <laughs> But I like hearing what other people, I like to hear what other people think it is. So, yeah. And like some, some people have like these extravagant, like explanations of like why he did that. And it's like nothing of what the workout is like later no. on, but it's just like, oh, well, the mushroom is because of this, this, this. And you're like, no, it's not. Yeah. No one, will, I don't know. It's hard to guess. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's very hard to guess. But, um, yes. so, I know you said you're not really like trying too hard for like the open. So it, it what's like not trying too hard for you? Just like kind of staying in that 20, oh, like, 20% like I'm range. Hard. Like I'm trying for each workout. Like obviously like I'm doing my best. I can't like, I'm trying hard. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not like tapering each week to be fresh, to do the open workout kind of thing. Okay. Like you're not okay. peaking for the open. Yeah. So, so are you doing all the open uh, open workouts at uh, Training Think Tank or are you just doing them up in New York? Uh, Training Think Tank. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. How, how often do you come down there? Um. Well, I, mean, I lived here for three years, so I was here for a while. And then I just yeah. moved to New York in October. This is my first time back visiting. Okay. Okay. Since October. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, I definitely wanted to talk to you about your social media presence. So oh. you, I mean, you've, you, you're killing it. You got like what, 109,000 subscribe like followers and stuff like that. So when did you see that uptick in, in your social media? Um, over like the last, it's like a couple of years. Like I've been posting on social media for a while and like, it just takes a couple of years. And then like, when like a video gets like a big hit, it gets you follow. It just builds. I don't know. <laughs> it's just like a gradual thing. And it's, like at first I'd only post like yoga stuff and then I started posting more fitness stuff and then just mix of everything. But I yeah. always enjoyed like, po- I used to like do like number Tumblr. Like that. Yes. Always- yes. Yeah. Like, I, I always had like a Tumblr. Like I always was posting stuff like forever since I was in, in college. Um, okay. But yeah. Then just same thing posting on Instagram. <laughs> Yeah. So does like CPT do all the pictures and then like send them to you and say, Hey, you could, you, you could use these or how, how does it work when you like are training at training think tank? Uh, we have Frank's on site. Frank. Okay. 
uh, with a lot of the pictures. CTP does pictures and videos too. And now Frank does pictures and videos too. And then um, they send them to us so we can post them, which is okay. super nice. They do a good job. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I mean, the, the one picture I, I, I connected with you, like I put next to Evan with, obviously. Like, oh, yes. Uh, Frank took that. Yeah. That, I mean, you uh, are. His Instagram is Derive Creative. Oh, I think I follow him on that. Yeah. I think He's I do. Awesome. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I can, most of those, most of those camera guys and like the media team are, are pretty nice. Like, like all, all around. They're like, I don't, I don't think there's any me, one mean person. No, no, I haven't met anyone mean. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's good. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like you, I, so with that picture with Evan, I was just like, wow, like you could see like almost like every single muscle working I, on, on that. But I think it was probably a devil press that you were doing. Yeah. That was from and, uh, our group session Monday devil's presses in the workout yeah and i'm like wow i might i mean i it definitely does help being fit and and very and very good looking too as well so thank you <laughs> yeah well i'm and so um how do you do you schedule out your your pick your post at all or like how does that work for you um i don't ha i have like specific like posting requirements for some of the brands that i work with so i make sure i fulfill those and then I try to like not only be promoting things when I post and keep things light as well, like post stuff that I like. So I don't have like a specific social media schedule. I just kind of make sure I post like for the brands I work with and then um, post when I feel like it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what are the brands that you work with? Um, some come uh, pixel for like crossword equipment um, first form is I get off, do all my nutrition with first form. I use the first form app to log my food every day. And that's the app I use with most of my nutrition clients as well. Um, what else? Those are like the two, two big ones right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So do you, do you like their uh, nutrition bars at all? Oh yeah. The level one bars. Yeah. Yeah. I love them. Have yeah. you tried them? Yes. Yes. I, I, I do. I do like flavor? them. Uh, not, I mean, I, I kind of just like pick whatever, whatever's out there. So it's just like, there's a couple, there's a, there, I mean, they, they're all have good one. They're all good. So it's yeah. just like whatever's available like Kroger or whatever. So I'll just like oh, take yeah, it and yeah. just go. So oh, I buy them and buy, I like the peanut butter pretzel one. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. And the, just the peanut butter. I guess I like peanut butter. So I like the peanut butter and the peanut butter pretzel. Yeah. So do you take all their supplements too as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I've, I've, I've used their creatine before, but I haven't used like anything else. Like what's, what's a pretty good, um, like pre-workout for them? I use their, um, endurance for pre-workout. Okay. It's called it endurance. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. And then, or I don't, or the hydration sticks as well. And then okay. yeah, post-workout I'll do protein, like the formula one whey protein. And what else? And I take the microfactor vitamins and creatine. And those are like the main supplements. Okay, cool. Very cool. All right. Yeah. Um, and um, I do have a couple of like rapid fire questions. They're not really like rapid fire. You can take as long as you want. So, okay. Um, <laughs> so the first one is what, what are you, obviously it's the beginning of, of 2024. So do you have any like personal goals or, you know, business goals that you want to hit by, by the end of the year? Um, personal goals, like short term, like individual semifinals is the goal short term right now, business wise, just continuing to like grow my brand as well. Like through social media and my clients would be the two. Okay. okay. I'm working and, on. Mm -hmm. and how many clients do you typically have? Uh, right now, like between personal training, nutrition, yoga, like 25 is 20 or 30 to double check. Dang. That's crazy. Are you, are you looking for more? Not right now. Not there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless well, it's an exception where someone like is really like going to just be a good client. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Um, so do you have a favorite book you like to read or give out as a gift? Favorite book. Um, it's so fun. Most of the books I've given as gifts recently are children's books to my friends' children. <laughs> <laughs> um, for adult books, hmm. 
what is my favorite book? Like, first thing that pops in my mind is, like, The Alchemist. Okay, that's a good book. Would be, like, the first thing that pops into my mind. And, yeah, I'll go with that. It's all I can okay. think of. We're, like, a witching hour for me at this time of night. Like, I don't usually think or use my brain after I eat therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Like, once the kids are in bed, I'm, like, just good night. Like, I'm just kind of, like, out of it. So, yeah, um, this is, like, I'm <laughs> my bedtime. <laughs> i'm usually in bed right now yeah I, I'm, I'm getting close to it i usually go to bed at 10 okay. but the thing is like i wake up at four o'clock in the morning so oh gosh that's, that's the only time i can work out do you take the so. 5 a.m cross the class no i i yeah. so i i train i train at a uh a 24 hour gym that has like all crossfit equipment in there oh that's pretty cool yeah so it's nice. it's like because like, like the five thirty class like i can't i, I could do it but like where it is it's just way too far from my house because like by the time mm -hmm. i'm finished working out I, I have to drive like an extra like 25 minutes or 20 minutes just to get back to the house and i won't like i'll let it like rush to get my son ready to go to school so it's like yeah no, it's sense. not really worth it yeah and i fall and i follow misfit athletics too so that's like i've been following them for like a long period of time and and so like they their workouts are pretty much like an hour and a half oh and so, so you know like time it takes get it done yeah yeah, yeah. So I kind of get as much as I can in and then just like and then go. So and then just nice. like do do whatever I can, you know, play with the play with my son after school or whatnot, or go for a walk or coach some like, football. Yeah, pretty much. And now coach soccer. So <laughs> some soccer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, and so, yeah, I I my son wanted to play. My son my son had no desire to play too. And I'm like, come on, just go play. I'm telling you, it'd be worth it. He's like, No, no. but my daughter was like ecstatic with that. She, I was the coach. So it was pretty cool. Aww, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So all right. next, next question. So this one's a little deep. So let's just say this is your last day, last day on earth and you have all your friends around with you, around you. How do you want them to know you as? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes an honest person see it at that okay okay yeah all right awesome um what is what is some what is something that you like to do but people really don't know you like doing it mm. what i like to do hmm that like people you, don't know. Yeah, you could be like a closet Backstreet Boys fan or something like that, or in sync, or like what whatever, like something you like to do like for fun and like that no one really knows about. Huh. That's a good one. I don't know. Maybe like TV show. I don't know. TV, no one knows I'm watching my TV. I'm watching Spy Family. On Hulu, it's like an anime about like spy family. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I haven't told anyone that's watching that. <laughs> it's all like dubbed because it's not in English. <laughs> yeah. D so, do you like anime? Uh, I guess yeah, like cartoons and stuff. Yeah, like I was always yeah. like a Sailor Moon fan growing up, Sailor Jupiter fan. Okay. And so, my brother likes watching anime cartoons, and he always gives me recommendations on good ones. So I just started this one. And I'm like obsessed with it. Like, like oh, I want to stay up watch another episode. But I got to go to bed. Yeah, it's like you're getting close. So I got, I got to, yeah. I got to go. Got to go. Short episodes too. They're like 20 minute ones. So it's like, oh, it's time oh. for one more. <laughs> yeah, it's almost, it's almost like a, um, a Dan Brown book from like the Da Vinci Code. Like those, remember the paragraphs? Like the chapters are like literally like one page to the yeah. next. And you're like. Oh, there's like one more page left for the next chapter. Like I can just keep on going, and just plow right through it. Yeah, but and then all of a sudden it's like hours later. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So next question: okay. What is in your gym bag? Um, that's so I'm looking at it right now. I can tell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. Uh, let's see. I have a belt. My journal, my all my workouts, voodoo floss, tape, um, my jump rope, I my bunny, my lucky bunny. Okay. 
been in my gym bag, I think, for eight years. Now, now, who gave it to you, and what's the story behind that? Uh, me and my sister have met. I, I, lo- I like, I'm a big stuffed animals fan. Okay. <laughs> um, so, me and my sister are matching lucky bunnies. So, we, okay. I keep mine in my gym bag. That's a good story. Yeah. I feel like I've always had an animal, like a stuffed animal, like when I played sports and stuff, like lacrosse, like I always had something like stuffed animal in my backpack, mm-hmm. my gym bag. Okay. Um, oh, a lot of fruit snacks. Favorite? Hydration sticks. I have a whole whole pocket of just snacks, actually. Of just fruit snacks. There's like 20 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Hair ties um that's about that's yeah that's it <laughs> okay okay Nothing cool too cool yeah um so the last question so where can people reach out to you if they have any questions about like personal training with like yoga as well or you know growing on instagram or getting involved with like ttt yeah you can message me on my instagram i try to look through my messages every couple of days because sometimes they get lost because they yeah. go to like the other folder but every once in a while, like I'll try to scroll through and see if I missed any and like catch up on stuff. So you can just send me a message on Instagram and I'll try yeah. to get, I'll, I'll get how, to it. <laughs> how hard, how hard is it to catch up on like all those DMs that you get? Um, I feel like, uh, I've gotten better at it over the years. I used to let it like add up like a lot. Like and then <laughs> there'd be like one night where it took me like an hour to like respond to things. And now like I'll, every couple of days I'll go through and I'll try and I'll just like respond. So I don't forget. Versus like, oh, I'll go respond later. When you open something, you respond later and like forget about it. So now it's just like, I see it, I respond on to the next. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have that issue. So I literally barely anybody DMs me. So it's whatever. So I can't, I can't imagine like the, the amount of, amount of DMs that you get. Some things you don't want to answer. So it's just like, yeah. you're like, I yeah. don't know if I should like screenshot this and like post this in my story to like show how crazy people are or just let it go (laughs) yeah so so i've so a lot of people know this on the podcast so my wife is a fashion influencer for amazon Um, and so um i'll send you the links and stuff of her page but she's got like three hundred thousand followers on instagram oh wow yeah and so like she shows me all yeah she shows me all like the the dms that she gets from like guys or whatever like i don't know it's just yeah like who sits there and like takes the time to write that i'm sure she gets emails also i'm like who went and emailed this <laughs> yeah yeah it's yeah she like it, and then like she's like oh everyone's like oh i like your feet and it's like all all about the feet for some reason i'm like yeah that's the like, thing why so feet and armpits nice thing armpits yeah it's a thing I, I, I did not know that. <laughs> Ask your wife if she gets armpit requests. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll definitely, I, I got to write yeah. that down because I'm going to forget armpits. <laughs> armpits are, they're in somewhere. Some, there's a need for them somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. But um, thank you for coming on the show. I really do appreciate it. And I, I, would, I would love to have you back on too as well. For sure. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it, message me. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. How, I will. You know how to reach me. Yeah. Uh, but like, thank you for, you know, taking the time and kind of, you know, having, you know, to talk to me and understanding about like your growing up and getting into CrossFit, doing yoga, you know, being an art major at Michigan, which it probably was crazy too. So yeah, it's a whole and, other life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, thank you for taking the time for this. And, you know, I really do appreciate it. Of course. I appreciate you as well. <laughs>